Definition of humble. I'm gonna read it real quick. Humble, having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance. A person that says they're the best ever or the greatest of all time. Can he make that statement as him being humble? No. Why? Why, Maya? Showing off. Done. All right, let's look at uh, some synonyms for humble. Me. Differential, respectful, submissive, and self-effacing. A person that claims to be the greatest ever cannot fit into this category. Because we are we already know that that person has pride. A prideful person can't be weak. A prideful person can't be humble. Huh? Let's look at the definition of meek. Meek, quiet, gentle, easily imposed on. Or submissive. Can the greatest of all time be meek? Alright. Let's look at some synonyms for meek. I'm gonna show that these two words are one and the same. So if you're humble, you're gonna be meek. If you're meek, you're gonna be humble. Synonyms for hump for meek. Submissive, yielding, obedient, compliant, tamed, biddable, tractable, humble. Y'all see that? Both synonyms for each word, one is either meek or humble, or humble and meek. So these words are one and the same. You can't be the greatest of all time and be humble. You can't be the best ever and be meek. Because those, those two terms are prideful statements. And the world has taught us all to be prideful. Take pride in everything you do. Take pride in your possessions. Show off a little bit. I'm not sure if any of y'all, I know y'all don't remember, but remember a show that used to come on back in the day called MTV Cribs. Right. I will walk you through my mansion and show you what I have, the things that you can't get because I'm rich. Right. You know how private that is? Back in the 2000s, MTV Cribs was one of the former music video channel's most popular and fascinating shows. Each episode took viewers into the homes of pop stars, rappers, athletes and actors, and the celebrities themselves gave guided tours of their luxurious surroundings. Of course, it was pretty much just a setup for them to flaunt their wealth. But if viewers ever felt envious of all that stuff those stars had, well, the stars might have felt envious too. That's because many episodes of the show were staged and actually full of lies. A lot of the people who have gained all this, uh, this wealth, they don't come back to the community and help. They don't come back to the community and make sure that you have an opportunity to uh, obtain wealth for yourself. They rather show off. They rather be pride. Huh? Uh, and again, we don't operate in pride. We know the most high doesn't even like it. So let's let's uh, let's let's open up with a few scriptures real quick. Let's go to Proverbs three and six. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Can the greatest of all time make this plan? No. Will he use this scripture? Or he, will she, he or she use this scripture? No. Why? Because the, the, the greatest of all time or the best ever is not thinking about the most high. They're thinking about themselves. How they gonna obtain more wealth. How they gonna show off to the next person. They're not looking to acknowledge the most high. Even when you see them get on stage at like award shows and be like, oh, I wanna give all honor to God for Jesus Christ who saved me. That is fake. Because if they were really wholeheartedly Believe in that statement, they wouldn't do some of the things they do. Mm -hmm. They turn right around and have a woman in their video twerk. Mm -hmm. But giving all praises to, to God who woke me up this morning. Mm -hmm. The best ever. We, we know Floyd Mayweather. Everybody likes Floyd Mayweather. He's a great boxer. Extremely proud. 
Extremely, extremely arrogant. I mean, extremely, uh, right? Extremely. <laughs> extremely. How I want to be like you. Come on, man. I'm the face of boxing. Everybody in the fight game want to be like, be like the, the, the Uno. We finna go to the mall. Shane, you and Big Bear, you can't go to the mall. We going to the mall. That smells so good. He doesn't care nothing about the most high. Mm. All he care about is his wealth. And he would tell you that. I'm money made well. But again, you can't make this type of statement and then you you're not gonna be five hundred six and three. You're not gonna acknowledge the most high. You're gonna acknowledge yourself and the things that you have came up with, the things you have gained from this world. But let's look at an example of a person who did acknowledge the most high. Let's go to Matthew uh, nineteen, verse sixteen. Again, y'all, y'all young is y'all young. Pay attention because you don't want that spirit of pride to grow inside you. John? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, my dudes. So I just pulled up Floyd Mayweather on the internet and it says Floyd Mayweather comes to Jerry Wolfie. Says he makes money for himself. Uh -huh. That's what I'm talking about. I can hear you say give nothing to him. <laughs> And like the brother Shaw just said, that brother spent $20 million on a watch. Can you imagine that? Wow. I wouldn't spend, be honest, I wouldn't spend 20000 on a watch. And his brother spent twenty million. And he said, he, what did he say, Mark, though? He shuns charitable giving, huh? That's crazy. He just does. <laughs> that's our team. Again, yeah, that's why even when you uh, accomplish things, Acknowledge the most high, the most high God. That way you won't become like Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. That way you won't become like Floyd Mayweather. You always have your, 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 you always be grounded in the scriptures. And you're going to do exactly what the scriptures tell you to do. And again, we know we're supposed to operate in humbleness and meekness, right? Right. Uh -huh. So if I came into some money, chances are I'm going to be ready to give it away. I'm going to be ready to go help somebody who doesn't have it. Uh -huh. Read that script out. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said to him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he approached him and said, Good master. Called him good, right? Let's see how the Mashiach responds. And he said to him, Why call you me good? There is none good but one. Did the Mashiach say, No. I'm the, I'm the one that the most I sent. Yeah, I'm good. He said, no, why call me good? There's only good one, there's only one person that's good. That's the most high. Uh, keep going on. That is the most high. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. Again, you see, you know, the, most, the Mashiach didn't say, oh yeah, I'm that guy. Or oh, I'm gonna take that good, you call me good, yeah, I, I am good. He said, no, there's nobody good but one. He acknowledged the most high. He, he did Proverbs 3 and 6. That's right. That's how we have to be. Mm -hmm. Our daily walking is like we have to acknowledge the most high every step of the way. That way the most high continue to be with us. That's right. Huh? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's, uh, let's go over to John. Chapter 1, verse 19. Let's see if this took place again. The book of John, chapter 1 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. And this is the record of Yachanan, when the Israelites sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not Hamashiach. So he said, I'm not Hamashiach. And he said, No, I'm John, I'm Big Cuz. He said, No, I'm not Hamashiach. Keep going. And they asked him, What then? Are you Eliyah? And he says, I am not. Are you that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who are you that we may give an answer to them that sent us? Why say what say you of yourself? Now keep John and how he responds. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the master, as said the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And they were and they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said to him, Why baptize you then? If you be not Hamashiach, nor Eliyah, neither their prophet, Yachanan answered them, saying, 
I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you know not. He it is whom coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. So do it look like John was being prideful here, or was he being humble? He was being humble. Was being humble. He said he's not worthy to unlatch the Mashiach's shoe. But again, he was born for the Mashiach. He didn't say, oh, I'm big cuz. I'm John. I'm the guy the most side sent to clear this path. Y'all look, y'all still looking for me? No. He said, I'm not that guy. Um, that guy you want is out here. I'm not even worthy to unlatch his shoe. That's a, that's a, that's a humble person. And y'all gotta understand, y'all do recognize that John the Baptist was the Mashiach's actual cousin, right? That's right. You understand that's that, right? right? Yeah. So that's like you telling your cousin, nah, I ain't even worthy to unlatch that brother's shoe. Right. That's got that's a humble thing. Hey, most of y'all want to beef with your cousins, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? Y'all know how it goes. It's my, like, yeah, sure. <laughs> they have all beef with each other. They sisters. Uh -huh. But again, this is the humble approach we have to take. We can't always look to big ourselves up. When we do what uh, what the most High wants us to do, other people going to see our life. And they're going to big us up. Uh -huh. And it's still important for us to remain humble even then. Uh -huh. Huh? Uh -huh. Let's go to uh, Luke 7. Book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 24. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went you out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? So again, we see the, this is the Mashiach speaking. We're going to drop down to 24 to see how the Mashiach refers to John. I mean, 20, 27. Verse 27. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, which shall prepare your way before you. Uh -huh. For I say to you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than Yachanan the Baptist. So again, we don't have to big ourselves up. We don't have to claim to be the best ever. We don't have to claim to be the greatest of all time. And when we do what's right, that the people big us up themselves. But we have to remain humble in everything that we do. We see the Mashiach said John was the greatest prophet. God? But he that is least in the kingdom of Yahweh is greater than he. So we need to, to, to stay focused on making it to the kingdom. Because as great as John was, the least in the kingdom is greater, greater than him. We can't make it if we're prior. We can't make it if we're the best ever. If we use the terms like that, because pride is already building up inside of us. All it takes is for something, somebody to come in and continue to add to that pride for us to be like, you know what? It's I, I can do this. I don't need nobody else. I don't need the most high. And that's how it starts. Huh? So again, we got to remain humble. Let's um let's start, let's go to Matthew 23 and 11. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 11. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. So, Amir, you got a killer crossover, huh? You better than everybody on the court. What you think you're supposed to do? Say I'm not. Not say you're not, but you're supposed to be a servant, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is you're going to show that person that killer crossover. You're going to teach the people on the team how to be great, oh. just like you. You're not going to say, oh, I'm better than all y'all. You're going to teach them. Because that hurt their feelings. That too, but you're going to teach them because you're going to be a servant. Because you you you're power. greater than them. Huh? No, I was just saying, you just don't know. It's not that you don't tell them that. It's you just don't take the power at the most high bless you with and abuse it. Huh? You're going to teach. You're going to be a servant to them. Keep going, huh? First of all. Verse 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. He that humble himself shall be brought low. He that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Again, we want to operate in humbleness. We don't want to operate in pride. We don't want to be prideful. Because the scripture just says, he who humble himself, the most high will is on. You understand that? Um, Shalom, I will. This is for you too. Last week I was on what was it, two weeks ago. Yeah. I was going about talking about the goat being the goat. So pay attention. You get some understanding. Matthew chapter twenty-three, verse eleven. 
but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So you, Maurice, you want to humble, you want to be humble out here. I heard you was talking about being the goat too, right? You was the one that brought up the goat, trying to, to explain how, bad, how it wasn't a bad term. Right, but you tried to explain like how it was cool, and we was letting you know that it ain't cool to be sitting there talking about I'm the greatest of all time. Gun? Can I say something real quick? Go ahead. I feel like you, you felt like we didn't understand what GOAT meant, that it was an acronym, right? And then you thought that we were just making this, like, oh, we're not an animal, right? Well, we do understand the acronym. The acronym was around before you were. We're just trying to let you know that, <laughs> you know, even with that, there's a spirit behind it. There's a prideful yeah. spirit in that statement. That's that right. prideful spirit is that acronym. So we're trying to get you understanding on that. And the so fact that you, hold on, hold on, Paul. The fact that he even thought we didn't know what it meant. <laughs> that was prideful in itself. Y'all kids, y'all can teach us. We've been around the block way before you. Understand that? Con, con. <laughs> <laughs> but the key is to be humble. No, no problem, no problem. The key is to be humble. Uh, don't try, just do it, right? Because you don't want to be the type of person to not be humble in a the situation, then let that humble manifest into to being just a prideful person. Because again, you you play basketball, right? That's what y'all was talking about, right? And you and you may have skills, right? You don't want to be like, oh, can't nobody check me? Can't nobody hold me? Can't nobody stop me? I'm the best ever. Because then the most I have to show you, he gonna have to humble you. So humble yourself before the most high do because what he do is gonna be painful. That's right. Absolutely. Hey, real quick, can we go to Ecclesiastes 10 real quick? Because I think that that's right where we went. You got that? I got my, I got my, let's go. Okay, real quick. Ecclesiasticus chapter 10 and verse 12. Ecclesiasticus chapter 10, verse 12. Go ahead. The beginning of pride is when one departs from the most high. One more time. The beginning of pride is when one departs from the most high. One more time. Mm -hmm. The beginning of pride is when one departs from the most high. Go ahead. And his heart is turned away from his maker. All that it takes for <coughs> your heart to be turned away from your maker is for somebody to be like, oh man, you was cold. You'd be like, yeah. But, but you on your own terms, you didn't create yourself. You don't provide for yourself. All of us. I mean, even us as adults, even when we go out to work, it's the most high that, that strengthens a man's hands to get wealth, huh? Yes, we do. So with everything that we do, with everything that we get, it's always all praises to the most high. That's why I love when Shofar went back to Proverbs 3 and 6 and says, you know, acknowledge him in all your ways, not just when you get an award. Not just when, when you're in front of people, mm -hmm. but even when there's nobody around and it's like, man, I never thought I was going to make it this far. I'm on my bed getting ready to go to sleep or praises to the most high because I know I couldn't have got here on my own power. Uh -huh. I couldn't have got here on my own strength. That's why, that's why I, I love how you are putting that to, to Maurice because there's a lot in that. Uh, Elder, Elder, please keep reading the next that next verse because uh -huh. it tells us what what pride? God, God, God. What comes? What comes? Verse thirteen. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that has it shall pour out abomination. Mm -hmm. And therefore, Yahweh brought upon them strange calamity, and overthrew them utterly. Uh -huh. Yahweh has cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. Yahweh has plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. Mm. Yahweh overthrew countries of the heathens mm. and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. Uh. He took some of them away and destroyed them and has made their memorial to cease from the earth. Mm. Notice that. Notice that. That's powerful. Yeah, we see that today too. Absolutely. Uh, that's uh, why he called America, aka Babylon, the most proud. Uh -huh. This is the most proud empire ever yes, walked the face of the earth. They got something to add to fold, bro. That's, That's right. right. You That's know, right. and again, the examples like we just read right here, the examples was in the ancient times. Look what he did. What he said, he did the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? He said, follow this example, or right, you will be burnt to the ground. 
All right. And these, these evil people was following that example Paul said. That's, right. par that's par I think that's paradise out there in California. Paradise. Yeah, they showed them. Most I showed them what's going to happen to yeah. their paradise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he showed them what's going to happen. But there was some prideful people, too. I, I was just going to say, just think about it. They didn't want us to live there because they didn't think we were good enough to live with them. That's right. right. And the Most High came and destroyed the whole city. And by now, you've seen the pictures. You've heard the news stories. You've heard about the deaths. But here's what the media is not telling you. Karma is a universal law, and all things must balance out. Paradise, California is one of the most racist places in the United States. 100% white conservatives who have placed Confederate flags, burned crosses, and houses in any black person that has attempted to move within that vicinity of that town. The locals warn you to stay out of paradise. Up until last week, their biggest headline was their city councilman was trying to defend a racist post that he made on Facebook. Well, now today, paradise no more. Paradise has been burned to the ground by karma. If you don't know your history, then you're doomed to feel sorry for the very folks that think less of you. And this is what's left of them today. Barbecue them. Thanks, Barbecue them. We just showing those videos on Feast Dedication. People <laughs> we walk by his neighbors. The, the car smoked out his skeleton in the skeleton car, brother. The car. You Good understand time. me? Good. The skeleton sitting in the passenger seat. Well, I'm going to show you what happened here. This poor soul right here got burned out. Literally burned. This is the poor guy I came down to, to get my crippled friend out and he didn't make it. Nobody made it down here. These people all got burned out. I, I was right down below them here and my friend, as the car's on fire, you can see he's dead. It says pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them that are born of women. Okay. It wasn't made for us. Absolutely. Right. We actually follow the ways of Satan. Part of uh, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Satan was the one that developed that pride and his beauty right. and you know, how both sides developed him. Uh, that's exactly what we follow in that footstep. That's right. All right? That's right. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, and verse 13. Uh -huh. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. It's to love evil. To hate evil, uh -huh. pride, uh -huh. and arrogancy, uh -huh. and the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. Mm. Yeah, we, we supposed to hate these things. So if you claiming to be the best ever or the greatest of all time, you are very proud of it. This scripture is talking about you. That's right. Okay. This scripture is talking about people that's proud. Like you, you like to do editors on the on, on the computer, right? And I told you, like, you got some great editing skills for somebody who never took a computer class. But don't let that manifest to be like, oh, I'm, I'm the best editor ever. <laughs> Always stay humble. Thanks, Dad. I'm crazy the most high. He the one gave me the skill to do it. Wow. Yes. Wow. Shine, you played football once upon a time, right? Yes. And you was good at it, right? All praise to the most high that he gave you that skill to be able to do that. That's yes. right. And he humbled you earlier when you had that incompletion. So for the soul, even myself, like I, I, I used to think I had the coldest jumper. The brother ain't just used to that. <laughs> I, I thought I had. I'm telling you, keep on happening. I thought I had the coldest jumper. We'll pull up and have court in a minute. And I bear witness, so I ain't gonna lie. I bear witness to this jump. This, but I'm like, man, how in the world is he doing? This dude like three seven. Coming to the school high school, pulling up with I'm talking about with range. Three seven. I know you're going to do something. But again, the most I had to humble. I pulled, pulled up on a dude, he blocked me. No, you can't pull up on everybody. Okay, I, I got a cold crossover. I'm going to cross you over and go to the hole. Dude, put my joint on the glass. Had me out there looking bad. But that's a humbling period. A humbling period for myself. That's right. No that's more bragging. Right. Just work out like I'm supposed to. That's right. Huh? Nah, uh nah. -huh. The book of Psalms, chapter 25 and verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Again, the prideful people with the most high not even dealing with you. He's not teaching you, teaching you his way. He said, the meek will he guide. The meek 
Will he teach his way? How can a prideful person get talked away with the most high? That person not gonna want to hear it. He think he know it all already. Uh, He's not even thinking about the most high in his word or learning his way. <clears throat> so again, we have to we have to remain humble and meek in this time. That's right. Even if you, you can be the, the best uh teacher ever, you can break down scriptures like no other. You still have to remain humble. Uh, you can't get bigger than than, than everybody else. You can't be like, oh, I'm the best teacher. I'm cold with the scriptures. Right. Can't nobody see me. I got a precept for a precept for a precept. Uh, no, stay humble. Because right. we all can learn every day. That's right. Nobody knows, nobody has 100 percent truth. Nobody knows it all. That's why we have to continue to learn. If you're not willing to learn from one another, that's pride in itself. Huh? Book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 3. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Seek you, Yahweh, all you meek of the earth. So all those that are the best ever, the greatest ever, the, 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 the most prime person, they're not going to seek the most high. Yes, they worry about themselves. But what do you, what do you say, y'all? Seek you, Yahweh, all you meek of the earth, God. which have worked his judgment. Mm -hmm. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. Mm -hmm. It may be you shall be hid in the day of Yahweh's anger. The pride will gonna be hid in the day of the Most High's anger. Seek meekness. It may it may be you shall be hid in the day of Yahweh's anger. Again, this is the reason why you want to be meek and humble. So when the Most High do unleash His wrath on those that are not keeping His laws, that and commandments, but those that are proud, you will be hid. He will keep you away from it. If you're not humble and meek, you're going to be right in there with everybody else. That's right. You're going to be doing the same thing everybody else is doing. The world tells you ain't got to keep the law. You're going to be right again. The world tells you you ain't got to keep the law. You're going to be right along with it. That's right. Prideful as ever. Like, you know what? I ain't got to keep the law. When the scriptures has told you from the New Testament to the Old that you have to keep the law. So again, be meek and humble in this thing. That's right. Those, those that are meek and humble are going to actually try to seek the most high. The prideful may do it for a show. You, you'll see, even the brothers that are like, oh, I got, got my fringes on, and all your how about how shit, you have a shop around the thunder. And then they turn around and be doing something completely wicked. Mm -hmm. Be careful, man. Be humble in this thing. Let's go to uh, Colossians 3 and 12. The epistle of Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 put on therefore as the elect of Yahweh uh -huh. holy and beloved mm -hmm. vows of mercy vows of, of pride of mercy uh -huh. kindness uh -huh. Uh -huh. of mind mm -hmm. meekness uh -huh. long suffering Mom Dukes, what did Floyd Mayweather say? Is that kind of y'all? No. What are you you said, what else, Mom goes? That was it. He don't get into charity. He's shunned. 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 I'm buying the block, all the blocks in Detroit that I can, and you gonna have a house. That's right. Uh, let's go to uh, 1 Peter 5. We'll read verse 1. We'll read verse 1. Again, this is for all of us, because we all can learn. That's right. right now, we're not too big, we're not too old to learn, right? Uh, no. I, I, you know, I, I was gonna know. say that too, because, you know, like, just looking out, right? We got like sapphires. You got like saplings, you like saplings for children, and you got like tall trees in the back or whatnot. God. Now, what the aqua was saying about him noticing what he was, it's kind of like, let's say you got a small sapling that believes that, you know, one day it's going to be this great redwood, right? It knows this in his heart, it's going to be this big one day, right? But who's to say that, you know, it can't get chopped down early, mm -hmm. right? And that's the pride. 
That's what'll come in and chop you down early. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But as, as humble as you are, and the more you, you uh, show your humility, the better the leaves can accept what the Most High is, is giving, like a nutrient type of thing. So do like not despise yourself like you, if you are a sapling. You know, the, the, the chop, the big and the small get chopped down with the same axe. That's right. Right. First Peter chapter five and verse one. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, a witness of the sufferings of Hamashiach, and also a partaker of the honor that shall be revealed. So you youngers, you got elders in here, right? Right? Okay. The elders is all those in here that's older than you, right? Verse 5. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For Yahweh resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So I'm telling you that to be the best ever is not of the most high. Don't despise that because it's coming from me. Don't despise when uh, someone older, older than you corrects you on something that you're doing wrong. Submit yourself to the elder if he telling you to do right. That's right. Huh. Submit yourself to him. Listen to him. Him or her. Try to get an understanding and then change whatever it is that you're doing. That's all. Because a lot of people that's in this truth is in it for the right reason. They're going to tell you to do things the right way. They, at least they want you to. But if you're not going to listen, if you're not going to submit yourself to them and try to get that understanding, then everything else is on you. You going to show or you going off and you breaking all sides of all, it's on you. When I came into this truth, I didn't know nothing. I ended up leaking out with the brothers. I went over to show house. How many, <laughs> how many times I come over there to learn? A couple times, yeah. And he, he so much Frank, you got in trouble, brother. I got in trouble. Boy, like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but again, those that knew more than me, I submitted myself to him. I wanted to know what I was doing, what I should be doing. If what I'm doing at that moment in my life, if, is it right or wrong? So I submitted myself to those that knew more than me. Y'all gotta do the same thing. We're not trying, we're not gonna tell you nothing that's wrong. But if I tell you anything that goes against the most out of all, cut me. Uh, Literally. <laughs> <laughs> cut me. That's what we do, we cuss. I, I tell my kids all the time, I'm gonna tell you what's right. Anytime I ever tell you to go against the most out, you have the right to say no. That's right. Because I'm telling you to go against the father. That's right. If I tell you to break his law, you tell me no, nah, that I'm not doing that. And then remind me what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Read verse 6. Verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of the Most High, mm. that he may exalt you in due time. So, uh-huh. be humble. In due time, the Most High going to make you shine. That light that's about you, he's going to have it brightest. Right, as, as the sun, everybody gonna see it. But you got to humble yourself. That's right. You got to stay humble. You can't be like, oh, I'm the best ever, and then expect the Most High to lift you up some more. No, the Most High is aiming to cut you down real quick. That's right. You may shine for a little bit out in this world, but He's going to cut you down. Huh? Wow. Um, right. What's up? Uh, the, the Most High has told this to our people. Don't think this is nothing new. Remember, there's nothing new under the sun. So we probably had some Israelites back in the day. Like, I'm the best ever. I'm the best fisherman. I'm the best on the chariot. Right. By the time you get the man in numbers, they got swallowed up. I don't know. Uh-huh. They came up against who? They were great, so right? Uh-huh. Supposedly. They was famous men in Israel, right? And they came up against Moses. And the most I said was the most meek man on the face of the planet. Absolutely. Uh, got their whole house swallowed up, right? God, yeah. I remember reading that story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do. I just can't got their whole house swallowed up. The, the, the children, the wives, the tent, the gold, the cattle, you name it, all went down because of their pride. God. God. Sad. Sad. But again, you have to, we have to be humble. So again, our people have been hard-headed for a long time and not wanting to submit to the most high. Uh, <laughs> and that's what they know. <laughs> Moses told him, he said, so that, I, yeah, you've been stiff neck since I know you. Uh, <laughs> so we came about it, he don't know nothing but being stiff neck. And, and then, oh, and then to, even to see our people this day talk about they're the greatest ever. God. The, 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 uh, well, the best ever, the greatest of all time. It's crazy. That, that statement in itself is super, super private. 
Because again, you don't know who the most high might bring up after you that's gonna right. be better than you. Uh, and you saying, oh, I'm the greatest. What? The most high time is unlimited. Uh, you talking about you the greatest of all time. Whose time? Right. Not the most high's time. Right. Uh, yeah. Because think about that. Like you just you, you brought out the example of Yakanai, right? Mm -hmm. Yakanai the Baptist, right? Yakanai the Baptist was about five, six hundred years be after Isaiah. You understand? And, and the Hamashiach told, it said, look, there ain't been a greater prophet than Yachanan the Baptist. And his predecessors came way before him. Right. But he didn't liken himself, oh, I'm the greatest. I, I'm better than Isaiah. You, didn't think <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? But that's what our people do today, right? That's right. That's right. You want to be better than your, your elders and what happened. That's right. wicked. Right. Well, the second Chronicles, chapter 7 and verse 12. And Yahweh appeared unto Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayers and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Verse 14. Verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from Shammayim and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Again, the Most High said this to our people back then. We established that was the Most High talking, right? Uh, he said this about our people back then. Meaning, we come from that same stock. That's right. So we don't be what our people was, but we have to change it now that we know who we are. That's and it's true. Uh, we have to flip it. We can't be the same. If we want to make it to that kingdom, we can't be like them. Remember, out of, out of, out of a generation, only two went into the kingdom, I mean, to the, to the promised land. That's right. Everybody else he killed off. But now he says two thirds is gonna be killed. Two thirds. Two thirds. We we trying to be the we trying to be the ones that go in. I ain't trying to be a part of the ones that's gonna be killed. Again, we have to be if most I told our people was this back then, we have to learn from what they did and do better. That's right. We can't be the same and expect for us to make it to the kingdom. Because right. it's not gonna happen. That's the same. The Psalms, chapter 149 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh takes pleasure in his people. The most high takes pleasure in his people. We are his people. I said we are his people. God. 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 The most high takes pleasure in us. Keep going on. He will beautify mm -hmm. the meek with salvation. He gonna, he gonna beautify the pride with salvation. He will beautify the meek no, the with best, salvation. No, the best ever. He will beautify the meek. No, the goat. The meek. The meek. You can't be meek if you have if you're making proud statements as being the best ever. I don't care what you do. You can be the best lyricist. You can be the best hooper. You can be the best artist. You can be the best English teacher. You can be the best scriptural teacher. You can be the best camp leader. It doesn't matter. You have to remain humble. That's right. It don't matter if you got a a congregation that has 30,000 members with members all over the world. You have to remain humble in this thing. God? Uh -huh. He's not playing with them type of people. He's going to punish you. That's correct. So if you got something that's that's causing you to be proud, get it about your system. Pray to the Most High to remove it out of you. Because when that day comes, when he decides to punish the pride, the proud, the arrogant, you don't want your name to be on that list. God? God. Go to Isaiah 14, verse 12. This is a chief. This was a Malachim who was up there chilling, who decided he was going he was gonna be like the most high. I know. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Where was he at? From heaven. How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. How prideful is that? Wow. The, you, you're going to say you're going uh, to be above the creator, the person that created you. Keep going on. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. How can you be like the person that created you? You got the same powers in? 
You can do the same thing he did. That's just an example of what pride looks like. Because he was a mountain king. He decided he was going to let his pride and beauty take over. He was going to beat life with the most high. Come on, man. Uh, read that Proverbs 16 and 18. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and in haughty spirit before a fall. Before a fall. So we all know Mike Tyson was one of the best heavyweights to come around, right? Mike started off extremely humble. He would knock a person out there and go help him up and make sure they was okay. But then somewhere along the line, it flipped. His spirit changed. And then he had to be humble. I only trained probably two weeks or three weeks for this fight. I had to bury my best friend, and I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight. I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Mike's left eye is really closing up now. As they take a look at it, get a good shot. Well, you can't see it, but I can. And his eye is really absolutely closed on the left side. That uh, jab of Buster was good in the early going. But the big surprise to me is the way Buster came back in the ninth round. Look at this. Buster not intimidated. He wants to keep it going. Mike actually, his legs, he's noticed his legs in these wide shots. He doesn't have good bounce in his knees. Buster's legs actually look fresher to me. See Mike the way he went back in his heels, doesn't have the good balance. His legs together as Buster's landing these. Oh, nice uppercut by Buster Douglas. Look at this. He's knocked Mike Tyson down for the first time in his career. Mike Tyson hits the canvas. He's in big trouble. He may not be able to recover. It's up to seven. And he, he not going to make it. Unbelievable. 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 Buster Douglas is a new heavyweight. 
Look at this stuff. This is history here. Mm. You are you are history. This is garbage. I can say hey, I bled for garbage. <laughs> So this is meaningless. No, at one time it meant a lot. When you're just a young kid, this is everything to you. But then you realize your priorities change. And you just want your children to be happy and do nice things. And that makes you happy. This is nothing. This is just nothing. Book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of Shamayim. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Does that sound like anything for the prideful? Mm -hmm. Not at all. Nope. Again, the meek shall inherit the earth. Not the proud. Not the proud. Not the arrogant. The meek. That's right. The humble. So let's strive to be meek and humble. And let's serve the most high with meekness and humbleness. Um, with that, I say shalom. 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 Truth is our gun. We believe it to be man's greatest weapon against the devil.